Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking to you guys about getting your credit right and tight for the new year and being ready for whatever life throws at you financially. I have been MIA for a while. I'm tired of giving that same old speech at the beginning of every video about how I'm going to be consistent. Um, I don't really have a New Year's resolution this year. What I plan on doing is just acting. I'm done talking. I'm going to just act. Today's video, like I said, is going to be about credit. And it is a very important aspect in a lot of the financial decisions that you guys will be making this year or I hope you'll be making this year. One thing I would like to mention when it comes to repairing your credit, the very, 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 very first step is checking your credit. If you haven't done so already, you can go on freeannualcreditreport.com. I'll put the link in my description and you can put up your credit report from all three credit bureaus and you'll see exactly what's on your score. The reason that's important is because there's no way for you to tackle the problem when you don't really know what the issue is. Okay, so that's for the people that actually, that's for everybody. The first step is putting up your credit report and seeing what's on there. Once you're pulling up your credit report and you see what's on there or the lack of things that are on there, that's when you actually get to look at things. What I always tell people to do is look at how long the items have been on your credit score. Usually the reportings last for about seven years. So once you look at what's on your credit, um, then you'll decide what's worth tackling and what's not worth tackling. If something has been on your credit for six and a half years and it'll be seven years in a couple of months and you don't plan on making any major purchases within the next couple of months, I would leave those things alone because <clears throat> what I've noticed is as soon as you interact with those debts, it's like they renew. So if something was going to get erased off of your credit within the next couple months because it's almost seven years old or it is seven years old, you interact with it, you reestablish that connection, that item is going to stay on your credit for even longer. Okay, so the longer things have been on your credit, I would not touch them. I usually start with things that are more recent on my credit and I tackle those things because they haven't been on your credit for as long and they have less of an impact. So that would be step one is reviewing your credit score and reviewing your credit report to see what's on it. Step two would be to start um, disputing things. I like to dispute things first because you'll never know the smallest things can make a big impact on your credit score. Things as removing old jobs, removing old addresses, anything that doesn't belong in your credit score, removing those things will have an impact on your credit score, okay? Um, the third thing I like to do is I like to um, write down my debt and categorize it from lowest to highest. Let's just say, for example, you have three credit cards, right? The best percentage to use on your credit card is about at 30% never use more than 30 percent on your credit cards okay so i like to say it like this say for example you are repairing your credit you need your credit to be fixed and everybody has to budget i hate when i see people post things that say if you can't afford to um fix your credit then you can't afford to um purchase a home or purchase a car or whatever like that everybody's finances are different in my opinion everybody's finances are different you have to take things the way you could take them. You got to deal with things the way you could deal with them. Don't worry about what people on social media is doing. Don't worry about what your goals are doing. Don't worry about what your idols are doing, what celebrities are doing, these influencers. Don't worry about that. You need to do what you can do for you to better your situation. So let's just say you only have $1,000. Do not split that $1,000 up and give this credit card one, that credit card one, or this credit card one. That's point. That is pointless, okay? The best thing would be to write down your debt in the order of smallest to greatest and start wiping them out by what you can afford. If you owe a credit card $500 and you owe another one $600, you owe one $300, $200, I would start by the smallest one. I would wipe out that 200, wipe out that 300, wipe out the one that's 500. And then now you have the two bigger ones left. And then the next time you come across some money, you slowly but surely start nipping down on the balance. That's what I would do. 
when I first started fixing my credit a couple of years ago, what I did was just as I said, I wiped out the smaller balances of debt that I had. And in the bigger debt, I didn't have enough money to wipe them out completely. So I divided those by 30% and I paid them down so that I could make sure that I was only using 30% of my credit limit on those accounts. That helped my credit out tremendously. And then over time, I kept on paying the balance on the bigger account until they depreciated and there was nothing left. Life happens. I've repaired my own credit about four times, y'all, because life happens. When I first got out of high school, I had semi good credit because I had a credit card when I was a senior. Well, it was like a student credit card through Wells Fargo when I was a senior. I got that credit card because my, me and my mom had a bank account at Wells Fargo for so long that day I was able to get a credit card for like $600. I didn't know what to do with this credit card. I was buying my boyfriend stuff. I was buying myself stuff, putting gas in my car, and I was not paying it off like I should have been. So sh slowly but surely, the card got closed. I was sent to collections. I had a Macy's credit card. I was paying that one good, but then I ended up losing my job. I was only like 20 years old. I ended up losing my job, and I didn't pay off on Macy's what I was supposed to pay them off. So I called one day and Macy's was like, if you make a payment, um, we'll open the card back up. Me not having any common sense, thinking that they would actually open up this credit card back up. I went and I paid Macy's their money. They never opened the card back up. That was on my credit for the longest, okay? That's something that people don't tell you. They say, oh, pay this off, pay that off. When you pay these cards off, they are not guaranteed to come off of your credit. They Sometimes they stay for up to seven years on your credit as well. So that's something else that you got to be aware of before you let things go get bad or whatever. But like I was saying, I fixed my credit. Um, After high school, I ruined my credit on my own. Nobody else's fault. I'm going to take accountability for that. I ruined my credit on my own after high school. Um, Then... I started fixing it a little bit. I didn't. I had zero experience. I was just researching on the internet, finding out ways that I could repair my credit on my own. And I even went as far as to paying one of these companies to repair my credit for me. And basically, my opinion, they was just milking the cow. They took forever and ever to um, repair my credit. My credit never got back to what it was supposed to be. And I just was paying and paying and paying, but I did learn from the experience. You get what I'm saying? I learned about secured credit cards. I learned about secured loans and things like that. And those helped me tremendously along the way. That contributes to why I do not trust credit repair companies. I feel like they're just a waste of your money. It's always a payment plan and things like that. But, um, so I was paying somebody to fix my credit for me and that didn't go well it took a long time my credit only went up a few points it didn't get to where i needed to be and i needed to move into an apartment so um my mom co-signed for me and i stayed in that apartment and my credit never um recovered like it just was going up so slow so slow so slow and then that's when the macy's things actually happened or whatever that macy's was helping my credit i made a bad decision didn't pay it off they closed it and that messed me up so then now, now I'm on the journey again to repair my credit. One thing I learned from the guy that was helping me fix my credit is about secured loans from your bank and secured credit cards. So I ended up getting those and my credit started increasing a little bit. Slowly but surely it was increasing. And, um, you know, life happens. I had to break my lease where I was living because I was faced with a situation that was beyond my control. And after I broke the lease, I was not financially able to pay the fees that I acquired from breaking the lease. So that went on my credit. So all of the progress I had made was pointless. It went, my credit score went right back down. So now I'm on the third trial of repairing my credit. Um, I started repairing my credit, doing the best I could. And then life hit me again. I'm a single mother of two on my own, no help financially and working working and paying this high Florida rent like credit was the least of my worries at the moment so that was the fourth time I had to fix my credit that was in 2016 I started fixing my credit again at the time my credit was the lowest it had ever been my credit was a 530 I finally got a good paying job I was where I wanted to be um financially and I was like okay this is the end I'm not playing with nobody no more I'm gonna fix my credit and I'm not playing so that's when I took matters into my own hand. I did my research. Um, 
and I just started building my credit up and my credit has been great ever since. I am officially in the 800s club and I don't play about my credit. I do not play at all. Um, and that's just something that I'm proud of y'all. Um, and it all, it's like, it, it takes research. It really does take research. Um, step one, review your credit report, look at the things on there, look at how long they've been on there. Step two, start disputing small items on your credit. Um, things that have been there recently that you think you could get rid of, start getting rid of your last addresses, last employers, anything on there. Even if your name is on your credit twice, dispute it. Whatever you can dispute, 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 dispute. Um, if something has been on your credit for going on seven years or seven plus years, I would leave those things alone in the beginning, in the beginning. When you're repairing your credit, it's all a trial and error. You're going to have to do some things several times to get them off of your credit. And some things, you know, after the first try, they'll be gone. Um, I don't recommend disputing them online through Credit Karma, Experian, or Equifax. Because those disputes are easy, are easily um, thrown out. I recommend um, submitting letters, handwritten letters, or typed letters with your signature. Sometimes even getting those letters notarized makes a difference. It's all like a technique. So those are things that you have to be aware of. And then the major key is that when you do repair your credit, you can be getting swarmed with letters of credit card offers, refinancing your car offers. Do not fall for it, y'all. Do not fall for it. Do not get more credit cards than you need in the beginning. In the beginning, if you if you don't have any credit at all and you're just now starting to build out your credit, what I recommend is getting one to two secure credit cards. And if you have a bank account, a good relationship with your bank, I will get a secured loan. A secured loan from your bank when i was building out my credit and i was paying a company to fix my credit he had recommended me to go to priority one credit union in florida i don't know if they have that where you are or wherever you are watching this video so basically what i did was i went to priority one credit union and i opened up a bank account with them and after two direct deposits i qualified to get a secured loan through them the first secured loan was only 500 dollars, and you cannot pay it off early you have to pay it off in the time frame that they give you and i believe it's six months they give you six months to pay off 500 dollars, and it's going to be automatically deducted from your account that you have with them which is why they want you to have direct deposit so after um i got the 500 dollars, um which was a good thing too because i used the 500 dollars to pay off a debt that i had on my credit and then every pay period they would take $60 out of my check to go towards the $500 until it was completely paid off and they didn't charge any interest it was just a flat fee I think a flat fee of nine eighty to ninety dollars I'm not sure it's been a while um and I paid that off completely my credit score went up a, a little bit or whatever and then afterwards I went to the next step you could it's not an obligation. It's up to you if you want to do it. I um the next thing was I was able to borrow fifteen hundred dollars, and with that fifteen hundred dollars, I paid off additional debt that I still had on my credit because, like I said, I had went a while without repairing my credit, and when I finally did start repairing my credit, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just listening to these people. I was doing everything these people told me to do. They didn't advise me to pay anything off yet, so obviously I wasn't paying anything off. I was just paying them. I was paying them to fix my credit and I just um, left the things that were negative on my credit because they told me they would take them off and they didn't. You get what I'm saying? Because they want you to be their customer for as long as possible so that they can make as much money on you as possible. So I didn't pay anything off. So um, when I got the $1,500 and I started paying off little things or whatever, and I also was budgeting too because I wanted to buy a house. So I was working two jobs, budgeting, saving money here and there. And I was also trying to pay off the things that were on my credit. At the time, I didn't think it made sense to give these debt collectors my money if I wanted to save it about a house, which don't make no sense because now from experience being a realtor, I know that one, the debt, the um, lender is going to tell you to pay off these debts. Depending on how big they are and depending on your debt to income ratio, they're going to want you to pay several things off. Two, like if you don't pay them, who going to pay them? Exactly. So you got to do what you got to do. That's very important. 
So, yes. If you need help um, repairing your credit, I don't advise paying somebody to repair your credit because I don't feel like that's safe. One, I feel like it's a waste of money because you're constantly making payments to someone to fix your credit and it's up to them how long they take. So you don't know how long you'll be paying them to fix your credit. Two, you can do it yourself. If you can navigate through the internet, you can fix your own credit. And three, I don't think it's safe because you're giving out your personal information to someone and you don't know what they're liable or what they're capable of doing. Companies get hacked all the time. Small businesses, big businesses, people get hacked all the time. Your information can be compromised. Not only that, but also people act like they're running a business and sometimes they're actually low-key scammers. So be careful with that. If you do want to pay somebody to fix your credit, there are some people that are reliable out there. But I personally feel like learning how to do it on your own is more beneficial to you because like I said, I had to fix my credit four times because life kept happening to me. Life can happen to you too. Instead of constantly paying somebody to fix your credit, if you learn how to fix your credit on your own, you can repair it whenever something goes on. Whenever life happens to you, you can make the adjustments and repair your credit. And you always have that in the back pocket. You get what I'm saying? You'll always have that advantage in the back pocket that if something was to happen, I can pick myself up back off the ground. You get what I'm saying? So if you need help repairing your credit, um, I'll put the link in the bio, but I did write an ebook that gives you basically goes into detail, everything you need to know about credit from A to Z, um, what makes up your credit score, the components that make up a good credit score, what you need on your credit. It also breaks down the dispute letters. These are professional grade dispute letters that I've used for myself and I've also used for my clients that are looking to purchase and rent apartments that have bad credit and they have all worked. So if you need any help with that, you can click the link down below. My um, DIY credit repair book is only $39.99. I also have a building your own business credit ebook and that's $19.99 that I use to build my business credit too. I'll put my business credit up here. Business credit is not really like your personal credit. You can build it faster. Within 90 days, I got my business credit score to where it is right now. Um, I haven't really been ordering. It takes a lot of like, you know, ordering from vendors and using net 30 accounts and things like that to build the um, credit. So just check out both of those um, books. I do plan on giving a, doing a giveaway soon, being that it is the new year and people need these um, things to function properly throughout the year. But I haven't organized that yet, so I'm still working on it. But Take a look into those. Um, follow me on Instagram. Look at my client reviews, my customer reviews. They're all on my Instagram page. Like I said, the book is only $39.99. We spend $39.99 on chicken wings when we go out, okay? So you could invest $39.99 on your credit. And trust me, you will not regret it. These are professional grade dispute letters, information, anything you need to repair your credit or anyone in your family, that's the advantage of it. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars to repair your credit and your families if need be, you could just make an investment of $40 and you'll gain that knowledge and you can use it to repair your credit, your families, your friends, anyone that you want. It's free information, literally. I'm giving you the cheat code to life, okay? So thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is a new year. Make it count, guys. Make it count, make it count, make it count. If you're interested in purchasing a home, make sure you check me out on Instagram at Cassandra the Realtor. I'll be glad to assist you in selling and renting your home. If you're not in my state, I can refer you to one of my colleagues that is statewide. I have a wide network of other realtors that I am affiliated with. I can refer you to them. And stay tuned for my next video because it's coming right at you. Period, poop. <laughs> Bye.